Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I'm in Chiang Mai, Thailand, and this morning we are going to the Friday morning Yunnanese Chinese market. It's a market that brings together a number of communities, hill tribes, and bring ingredients and fresh organic vegetables and pickles. And there's an amazing selection of unique street foods. And so today we're gonna go on a street food tour of the Friday morning market. We are gonna see what looks interesting and what looks delicious. I'm gonna share with you all of the street food action and this amazing gem of a market in Chiang Mai and all the food coming up with you in this video. So again, good morning from Chiang Mai. It is a beautiful morning and welcome to the market, the Friday morning Yunnanese or Chinese market, which brings together a number of communities and hill tribes to this market, bringing things from their villages and from their homes, ingredients, pickles, vegetables, fruits. There's so many different rare ingredients that you won't find at a typical market within Thailand because people bring things that they grow from their backyard in the mountains. Now there are many different communities which are represented at this market, but many with a Chinese background and descent. There is a large Chinese Yunnanese Muslim from the Jinha community. And so you will find a lot of halal food. And as you can see, the, the market is in the shadow at the base of one of the biggest Chinese Yunnanese Muslim mosques. And so I've been to this market a number of times throughout my years coming through Chiang Mai, but I've never actually made a video. So today I'm very excited to walk around to explore, to see what we can find, see some of the unique ingredients, and then we're definitely gonna be focusing on the unique street foods available. So let's get started. We're entering the market now, and already my senses are completely aroused. I'm excited, I'm hungry, and I can't wait to share with you all of the delicious food. <laughs> Okay. To begin this street food tour, I could not resist the aroma of the frying bajias and the samosas. They smell so good. That's gonna be the first thing we eat. They're frying them fresh right here. They have them all displayed at the front. You choose what you want. We're gonna get a little selection and then also see if she's, oh, she's making a fresh batch of bajias right now. อันนี้สมุสาค่ะสมุสาใส่อะไรครับใส่มันอะลูกับผักค่ะมันกับผักค่ะอ๋อคิดละ 10 บาทค่ะ a bag of bajias and samosas a mixed bag oh it comes with a sauce too mm-hmm. is that for the oh nice okay i just got to pop one of these fresh bajias in my mouth though immediately all fried to a crisp Mm. That is crispy. Oh, fried fresh, a light spice seasoning, not too heavy, a little bit herbal. Some kind of a coriander in there. And then you feel all the crunch of the, I think it's like a dal or a lentil, crunchy flour. Oh yeah, that's tasty. So let's try the samosa. Again, hot and fresh, fried. Crunchy and golden. Mm. Oh man, again, it's so crispy. This one is filled with potato. And again, just a light seasoning, a little bit of cinnamon in there, a little bit of coriander, and the creamy potato, which I'm not totally sure what the sauce is. I don't even know if the sauce is for the samosa or for the, oh, it's like a, 
I can taste it's a little bit sour, like a chutney almost. Oh. Mmm. Yeah, that's more like a, not so much a chili sauce, but like a chutney. It's kind of fruity and sour. It's just a little bit of chili and herbalness to it. Okay. And we're gonna keep on walking, keep on eating, and move on from here. And then along with all the vegetables and unique fruits and herbs, something that you'll notice throughout this market are the variety of Yuninese sausages, preserved meats like Yuninese sausage, Yuninese ham, something that's called like ne or mu nam kang, which is meat that is preserved in the morning dew and it slightly ferments and has a bit of a age to it. Definitely a very unique ingredient and you'll just see it hanging all throughout the market. Next up, we're gonna stop by this auntie who has an amazing pot. She's very popular and there's just a crowd. You'll see, it's kind of like under this tent section of the market and you'll notice that she's always surrounded by a crowd of people and she's really friendly. She was already smiling and inviting us to come closer. ไปหมันลุ่มๆเลยค่ะก็ไม่ถามเหรอมันคืออะไรกินครับค่ะเคยเคยชิมครับไปชิมไปชิมไปชิมที่ไหนไม่เคยครับก็ไม่กินเท่
Mm. It's so warm and comforting. I love it with that freshness, the squeeze of acidity of the lime, the crunch of the fritter, and then of course, bumping up that heat with the chili flakes. I like how it's really great for a morning dish, especially because it's not oily, it's not greasy, it's not meaty. It's just shredded fish, which is in the stew, and those amazingly juicy shallots. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is so good. Now you know why she's so popular. Tasty, delicious, perfect. Because it's so hearty, I've always thought that mohinga is a dish that, it's a noodle dish, but it almost eats more porridge style and it just goes down easily like a porridge. That was delicious. Ah, oh, yeah. I'm warm, I'm happy, I'm enjoying the relaxed friendliness of this market, but let's, let's continue exploring, let's continue eating. Probably one of my favorite ingredients to see at the market are all the different roots of herbs that are used in the cooking. You'll see not just coriander roots, but you'll see roots of all sorts of different unique herbs. There's one called rakshu, which I know is chopped up and used in varieties of lab. And there's so many different roots that are used in the cooking, which is so cool to see that you won't typically see at any normal market. And then right next to where they have the samosas and all the fried snacks, I believe it's the same family, they have a whole curry stall. And usually uncle is here dishing up the curries with roti in a cabinet, but I think he just stepped out. So I'm gonna choose a few things, just a little bit, just to taste, and then we'll eat this next. Mm. Okay, so I ordered the, um, well, I always love eggplant, so I got some eggplant curry, and then also I got a piece of goat on the side in a bowl, and then I got one of the fresh rotis. We gotta try this next. Then we have the, the eggplant, oh man. Anytime I see eggplant, I gotta go for it, and it's so creamy. You can see the garlic. that totally dissolves in your mouth. Mm. So creamy and so juicy. And then we've got, I added a little bit of a goat, one chunk of goat here on the side, goat curry. Oh yeah, that's a big chunk. I've definitely eaten at this place before on another trip years ago to Chiang Mai when I just stopped here and grabbed a couple bowls of curry. I remember, I remember that uncle. Mm. Oh yeah, tender goat. Well, you really taste the flavor of the goat. And yeah, spices are kind of mild, not too strong, but you can taste that it's been stewed for a long time. All those meat juices have come out. It's very meaty. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Almost has kind of a little bit of a fermented taste to it. I'm not sure if that's coming from a bean paste, from a fish paste, but, but it is good and creamy. And I love that, yeah, I just love the texture of eggplant.
ข้าวปุกว่าการเขาสองอันค่ะจ้าง่าดำอะครับพักครับใช่งาดำงาดำโอเคงาชิมอนใส่น้ำอ้อยอ๋อใส่น้ำอ้อยอโอเคครับอะไรคะสิบบาทอันนั้นสิบบาทกี่อันฮะสองอันไทยมากกว่าน้องมาก่อนค่ะโอ้ nice Michael that's for you นี่ก็กินเลยใช่ไหมกินเลยครับนี่ขอบคุณมากครับขอบคุณมากครับยี่ชียี่เซียนข้าวปุกยี่เซียนยี่เซียนยี่เซียนยี่เซียนยี่เซียน one of the most famous snacks at this market and you'll find it throughout the mountains I've had it in some of the villages in the mountains but it's basically sticky rice black sticky rice specifically then it's grilled over the fire and I love how it's grilled because it then inflates like a tortilla inflates and then she seems to like wait till it pops till it bursts or it deflates on its own so you've got that char of the fire that smokiness and then after that It goes onto a banana leaf, and then she spreads it with a combination of what is black sesame seed and sugar cane, and then just spreads that in, rolls it up, and it's on your way. You're ready to eat it as a snack. Oh, that is hot, right off the grill. Mm. Oh wow, that is so good. Oh man, it's gooey, almost to the point that it has a. A cheesy texture to it, like it's stretchy. You've got the smokiness from the fire, and that kind of like crunchy crust that has been charred on the fire. And then you've got that sweet sugar cane and the fragrance of the black sesame seeds. Man, that's a perfect combination. Goes with the gooey roasted sticky rice. Yeah, that stretchiness. That gummy glutinous is wonderful. It has just the right amount of sweetness as well, paired with that nutty sesame seed. Finally, at the back of the market, in an old, I believe it's the night market of Chiang Mai food court. This is a totally different food court where there's just tables spread out and there's a number of noodle stalls, very popular and very busy noodle stalls, right on the side of all the vegetables. And there's a variety of noodle dishes, a lot of, I believe, Shan Taiyai influence. There's some Chinese noodles and Yunnanese noodles. Looks like there's some split pea porridge noodles. Some of the places have no menus, and you just kind of gotta. Know what you're doing, even though we don't totally know what we're doing. But we might order a couple bowls of noodles, and that's going to complete this tour today. The perfect way to end this tour today of this amazing, friendly Chiang Mai Yunnanese Chinese market. แล้วก็เอานี้ด้วยไหวถ้วยหนึ่งเป็นสองไม่ใช่ไหมไม่เป็นไรเราตรงที่ได้ค่ะตรงตัดที่ว่าช้างอ่ะโทษโทษโทษเหมือนกันเอาออกมาแล้วต้องโทษช้างก็ใช่นะโทษเหรอนี่เป็นเป็นก๋วยเตี๋ยวไทยใหญ่ใช่ไหมครับอันนี้เป็นขอช่องขอช่วยหน่อยนั่งในนี้ครับทางนี้ครับตู้ของผม Alright we found a table 
and this is a whole food court section. Now these types of dishes I have definitely seen in Mehongsan where it's a majority Taiyai or Shan population and I believe that this dish is pretty pretty Taiyai, pretty Shan in origin. But you'll find dishes like this throughout Myanmar as well and very popular noodle stalls. I'll start with this, this dish here which I believe is a yellow egg, egg noodle. They blanched it with some pea sprouts and then topped it with some kind of a tomato minced pork relish. And this one is served dry with soup on the side. You can mix that up. You can add chili if you want. And you want to really stir up those noodles, get them evenly coated in that tomato sauce. Oh, it smells delicious. And I love that offset of herbs in there. Okay, let's try. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, wow, yeah. Oh man, that's tastier than it looks. You've got the flavor, the sweetness of the tomatoes. You've got a little bit of minced pork in there to make it meaty and a little bit rich. And again, I love that offset of the herbs in there, the coriander, the finely sliced green onions to just give it that dose of freshness. There's onions in there or shallots. You can taste the garlic. And then next up, I love that jiggle and the goopy stickiness of it wobbles around. But this is a, Usually I believe it's a split pea porridge or a gram flour porridge. There's some, I believe some pea sprouts at the bottom, a few small vegetables, the noodles are blanched, then they will really, like really have to whip up that porridge, split pea, goopy, really goopy porridge, and then put that onto your noodles so it's hearty in multiple ways and layers, and then top it with some seasoning, some soy sauce, some pepper, some fried garlic, and some coriander. I'm gonna go in with my spoon. Mostly start with that porridge. Oh, and the sesame seeds. The ground up sesame seeds, I believe, in there. Look how sticky it is, that texture. Mm. Oh man, it is goopy, but it is flavorful. And it, I mean, it really kind of takes on the flavor of whatever all those toppings are, especially the fried garlic, that splash of soy sauce, and the herbs. And then to break up the goopy texture, you have those noodles, which are kind of gummy. Now that we've tasted both the dishes, we can season. I'll let Micah do the seasoning. He loves to season. Whoa, Micah add, uh, added in a huge amount of seasoning to these noodles. That's gonna be fiery. Thank you for adding extra chili for me, Micah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That was just transformed from tomato noodles to roasted chili noodles. Oh man, the smokiness, the heat. I just cannot get enough chili. Well, and as this porridge sits here, it just immediately starts getting harder and starts to solidify. Could probably turn this upside, okay. It will slide, but slowly. You could almost turn it upside down because it's so, so solid. So hearty, so thick. That is a warming dish. And that's going to wrap up this street food tour, morning street food tour at the Yunnanese Chinese market. I think what really stands out to me the most is the different cultures and tribes that are represented at this market all coming together. Many of the minority tribes, you'll see ingredients, you'll see pickles, you'll see vegetables that you don't see at a typical Thai market just walking through Chiang Mai through the town. The market is open only on Friday mornings and I believe that it starts at about 6 a.m. but then it goes throughout the morning. Uh, but get here, you know, 9 a.m., 10 a.m. is a good time to be here when it's busy, when things are in full bloom and when all the food is prepared and ready to be served. So again, highly recommended. Make sure you check it out when you're in Chiang Mai and I'll have all the information in the description box below. Mm.
Thanks again. So thanks again for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe now so you don't miss the next video. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from Chiang Mai. And I will see you on the next video.